I don't think there's anybody in this room, including me, that likes the idea that we having to keep raise the ante. But if you look at the cities out there, they keep doing it because none of them are dumb enough to shoot themselves in the foot. Because, as was mentioned by somebody one time, um, you know, he ought to take a thousand or a hundred thousand dollar pay cut. Okay, now he works for less than his subordinates and their subordinates and their subordinates. You get what you pay for. Let's take a trip down memory lane. There was a few years back when this city was under a little bit of turmoil, and that was because the status quo, the old Riverside Guard, and I'm shooting myself in the foot here big time, and I'm putting a target right on my forehead. The old Riverside Guard wanted to dictate how life went in Riverside. Sadly, about a year and a half ago, I told John Russo, I said, hey, I got a prediction. I hope I'm not right. They're going to take out a council member, they're going to take out me, and they're going to take you out if they can win. We're at that precipice. There has been a smear campaign that I say, shame on the people that did this. And I know, I know who did it. I know exactly who did it. Somebody left a tall tale sign exactly who authored the blast email that went out that was absolutely below the belt and so full of disinformation, it's pathetic. Pathetic. These people have been holding back Riverside for decades. They've had control of Riverside for decades. This man's crime, he stood up to him and he said, no, you're not getting backroom deals. You're not getting special contracts. No, go away. Oh, but there's a price to pay for that. I paid for it. Watch a video, 722 of 14, in this very chamber. Very chamber. It was a turning point for Riverside. That made the exodus of our city attorney, our city manager. We got a new one. He brought in an awesome team. What happened? We discovered an $11.5 million budget shortfall in, a, in the form of a big budget hole. Actually, we didn't. Assistant City Manager Mariana Marashiva, who Mr. Russo hired because she is the best with HR, she is the best with finance that you will find in this state or probably anywhere in the country. She is highly sought after. She's been in a city manager before, and she's got job offers all the time. She found it. She cut through the BS, and she found it. She's now working on RPU at our behest to look through that to make sure we're on solid footing, or at least that was the plan. You know, what's really sad about this is if you stand up to the status quo in this town, you will be pulverized. About three months ago, it was interesting. I started hearing rumors that John Russo, he's and he's not one of us, and he talks different, and whatever. Yeah, we got this inclusion statement. I've been wanting to say this for a long time, and I'm going to say it right now. Oh, we include everybody. As long as your parents or your grandparents welcome the Mayflower in Riverside. I know it's a bit on the other side of the United States, but you get my point. If you're not from here, yeah, good luck. And I despise that. I despise when people come down here and say, you know, I really haven't lived here that long, but I got this problem. They shouldn't feel that way. This ought to be inclusion for everybody, day one or day 100. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. When John got here, a lot of our city staff, the lower level employees below management, were not, even managers, were not getting employee evaluations. They weren't getting the required employee training. When you don't train and you don't evaluate, you can't hold accountable. And part of the problem is, every time that you have a new city manager, it, the clock starts all over again. They gotta dig in, find out what's going on, takes a little while. I guarantee you, and nothing against our employees, it's human nature, but when the new guy comes along and wants X, Y, and Z, they're like, yeah, we'll get a rush order in on that, uh, put it in the bottom drawer, you won't be here too long. These three and four year stays by city managers are horrible, horrible to cities. We need stability. We need stability. We need to see projects through. We need to have staff feel comfortable where they stay for the long haul and there's oversight. That is efficiency. That saves you, the taxpayer, big dollars because we're more efficient. Part of the reason why John wants this seven year contract, he's asking for his contract for the five years to be renewed early and keep in, the, keep in the seven. He's headed toward retirement. He wants to just finish out here, live his life here, and spend the rest of his time here. The mortgage deal was to convince everybody that he's here for the long haul. 
he's tied with a mortgage. It doesn't cost the city a dime. It actually saves you money because it's not persable. And what that means is, is pay is persable. PERS ends up catching the bill for that in retirement benefits. These other benefits don't count as persable. They're not something that PERS pays. In other words, he doesn't get those benefits in retirement. He doesn't get the cash equivalent in retirement. It's done. It's over. The problem here is he wanted to provide stability to show his staff that he's here and committed for the long haul. This, this contract is what keeps him here. We can get rid of him at any time. He performs bad. Bye-bye. His contract is a commitment for us. It's to tell all the people in Riverside, hey, I wasn't born here, but I'm here to stay. I'm even planting my house here. It's ownership. When this man goes, our assistant city management team goes. That's a fact. Look at the last city management teams. Every time a manager goes, they go because there's probably a huge chance that they're not going to be retained. We have excellent, excellent talent here. Thanks to John Russo. Thanks to this council that voted for him. So along comes the hate mail by the who's who club, the status quo. Oh, you can't do this. You shouldn't do this. I, I was courted by a number of people that said, don't do this. Now, what's interesting is this blast email goes out and it says some horrible things, let alone the whisper campaign that started three months ago that did not take root, by the way. Some people came to me and said, what's this coup? Who's trying to, who's trying to get rid of Russo? We like the guy. What's up? I'm hearing all these people saying, we've got to jump on the bandwagon. We're all listening to each other. We're all going to go off the same cliff together. Didn't take. The blast email. I don't think it took. I got this many, six emails and two phone calls, and one was a friend, and the other one was a new resident to Ward 3, and said, I'm not sure about this. I said, you had bad information. Here's what's really going on. One of them said, well, I'm still not sure, and the others, others said, okay, I'll take that into consideration. Thank you. A blast email that badmouths this man, and that's all I got? And most of the emails that we received by the clerk that went to us, the majority of them are boilerplate. How ironic is that? Did they all get together? Hmm. They're all boilerplate, say the identical thing with a couple word changes, and it's based on the bogus email that was not true. Some of them are signed by people like Joe Blow 164 at yahoo.com. I don't know where they're from. Oh, and the person that, that authored the email? Yeah, hiding behind the name of a church, Agnes something or other? Go look it up on the internet. It's a church somewhere, Catholic church. I'm sure they didn't send it. I'm not implying that. So you have to ask yourself, why? Why don't they want John here? Maybe he stands up to certain people and he says, no, you're not going to get that back deal, backdoor deal. No, you're not going to get that special lucrative contract the way that you've been getting it in the past. Oh, trust me, it happened. Um, we've, got, we've cut, what, $4 million out of outside attorney uh, spending? You don't think that some of these attorney firms that were making two mil or so are not, un, uh, are not happy with him and our city attorney? You've got to be kidding. That's a couple million dollars every single year of lost revenue. We're not greasing the skids. This man's not greasing the skids, and that's the problem. Okay, I made a prediction a couple years ago, and I'm sad that I'm right. I'm making a prediction. We lose this man. We lose the assistant city managers. We lose a lot of top staff people. We're losing awesome talent and the, and the motion, the, the push that we've got going in. And the money that we're going to spend on a headhunter if we don't keep John, that's going to cost us more money than what he's asking for. Oh, that's smart. Shoot ourselves in the foot. Yet again, two steps forward, three steps back. Because I've had staffers tell me they do not want to go back to 2013 and 2014. It was not a good time for Riverside. It's a lot of stress. It's a lot of stress going through things like that. You all deserve better. Riverside, stop thinking small. This man brought us afloat to get our name out there. He brought us the Cheech to get our name out there. He brought us the Chow Alley that's, that's coming as soon as the county moves out of the way with their, with their encroachment to get their building done. Uh, Food Lab is on the way. It's, it's already building. The museum, it needed a reset. Oh, yeah, there's angry people that are mad about that because, you know, we shouldn't have closed the museum. Well, the museum people said we should have closed the museum. And it's going to reopen. It's going to be better than ever. 
Stop thinking small, Riverside. Start thinking big. You're the Pasadena of the IE, and I hate the term IE. We used to be the Orange Empire, and some disc jockey, it's rumored, called us the Inland Empire. Everybody needs to have a check on reality. I worked out in L.A. I know exactly what they think of us out here. They say that when they go down the 10 freeway and they're in Rialto or Bloomington, they look over and they see a sign that says Riverside to the right, and they see the tank farms, and they think that's it. And that's, that's been told to me by many, many people. They tell me, you live out in the desert, don't you? No. Live out in the valley, like Simi Valley, same weather patterns. Riverside, we need a good, strong city manager. We need a manager for the long haul. We can fire him at any time because if he mis mis misbehaves or, or doesn't perform properly. The seven-year contract is his promise to up that he's not going anywhere. He'll stay here for the long haul. We need that. We need to stop this short-sightedness. We need to stop this petty baloney, and we need to pay for the talent that we have to have to get us moving forward with these projects. These projects may not make it if we don't have somebody that's going to navigate us through. We can't keep living down this same path of replacing managers, replacing managers, replacing managers. It's not healthy for our city. It's costly to our city. And we've got talent that digs up an $11.5 million budget hole. If that had not happened, I guarantee we would have been on the road to bankruptcy. I predicted that when I had an a, uh, a, um, interview with the, with the Chamber of Commerce. I said, if we don't get our finances right, and this was in 2013 before I ever met this man, I said, we could be headed toward bankruptcy. And that's why I voted no on Measure A back then, the transfer. I support the transfer now. We're hanging by a thread. We're already looking at 4% across the board cuts. We need a team that can navigate us through these really rough waters or we will not make it outright. We are way ahead of other cities that haven't even started doing this and haven't even started looking at our, at our uh, PERS balloon payments that are due because of the projections, thanks to the state of California. We are not out of the woods yet. We've had awesome things happen over the last two or three years. And it's mostly this man right here and his staff of extreme talent. I cannot see us losing them. I cannot. I implore my fellow council members, do not vote against this. It's a small price to pay. I don't want to be the example of, yeah, we cut our guy, and uh, now we're going down on the uh, amount of people or the type of people we have and the quality, but hey, you know, we cut it down. Do we want to be that scapegoat? <laughs> Let another city do that. I don't know. I'm not one for spending money. I don't like it. I voted against Measure A for the transfer because of the principle. We weren't being honest with the people. But I see that we're not out of the woods yet, and I don't want us to see us go to bankruptcy or slip backwards. We have to move us forward. This is a huge mistake if we don't. And I don't want to be right on this. I do not want to be right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Mayor. I just wanted to make a brief statement. Uh, before we go to public comment, uh, I'd like to address what I consider really a vicious rumor that our city manager, John Russo, demanded a contract extension. This is absolutely not true. I approached John Russo in May of last year after I heard a rumor that the county of Riverside was looking to speak to him about their county CEO position after the announcement of the retirement of Jay Orr. I indicated to John that I was not speaking for the entire council, but myself. I've been in business for 35 years, and I've hired and fired many employees. And I know that it is very difficult to find and retain excellent employees. You have to be proactive to their concerns and responsive to their needs. I told John that I was appreciative of the job that he had done for our city, and I asked him what it was going to take for him to remain in Riverside. He said he was not looking for large raises, but was looking for stability for his family. John also reviewed, revealed to me recently that when he was negotiating his contract in 2015, there were items that he wanted included at that time that the city would not agree to. He told me that he agreed with then Mayor Pro Tem Jim Perry that they would revisit the contract in the spring of 2018 when Councilmember Perry would again be Mayor Pro Tem. Unfortunately, things happened last summer with a former colleague, and Councilmember Perry's uh, term as Mayor Pro Tem was moved up into uh, this fall. Uh, this, together with my conversation with John Russo last May, is how we came here today discussing an extension. And ironically, John interviewed for the job with this council three years ago today. I agree with much of what's been said, um, much of what's been said, because he, he has done a great job. 
but for, for me personally at this point in time, I'm, I'm going to oppose, oppose this agreement and let me explain why. First, I want to be very, very clear that my opposition has nothing to do or should be construed as an attempt to ask the city manager or anyone else in this city to leave. That simply is not true. Um, nor is it, nor is my opposition a vote of no confidence. That just isn't the case. Having said that, let me just voice my, my concerns. One is the timing. I, I don't know, there probably isn't a good, a good time to be doing any of this. And if you go up and down this dais and throughout this room, we probably would all get different dates. For me, we are in the middle of discussing RPU rates. We're also getting ready to discuss and work on our next two-year budget. And there's going to be budget cuts probably across the board and probably everyone is going to be affected. So the right, this just is not the right time for me. I'm not opposed to renegotiating his contract. I just think it should have been done perhaps four or five months into the future. From the very beginning, I have been fundamentally opposed to the proposed mortgage agreement. Um, it's my feeling that should, the city should not operate as a mortgage company for any employee, appointed, or elected official. In my mind, this leads to poor public perception. This is my opinion on how we perform our responsibilities. This, this is a huge factor for me. I'm also concerned a little bit with the one-time drop of the vacation hours. Um, if he takes advantage of, of that and, and takes the $44,000, my concern is I have many, many, probably half of my constituents don't make 44000 a year even with combined employment. Um, those, those are my concerns. It's kind of simple and to the point. Uh, I agree there's, uh, there's been a lot done. There's a lot of great things that have happened. There's been a lot of great change. Um, it's just it's my hope and desire that we can continue to do this in the future. Um, and my only concern is I wish this was done five to six months from now instead of now. Thank you, Mayor. When we look back four years, are we better off now than we were four years ago? Are we better off than we were five years ago? Uh, when we look at our reserves and what we're going to have in our reserves in, in, the, in the direction they're going in the next year, definitely. The numbers don't lie. We are going to be over the minimum and not looking at a 15% minimum, but looking and exceeding the 20% minimum. That is one that is significant uh, because it helps us in terms of bonding. It helps us in terms of showing uh, how strong we are as a community, and that is that is that is going and moving in the right direction. So, I can only say very positive things. Again, no city is perfect. Um, everybody has an idea. We're a city of 350,000 individuals, and everybody is going to have an opinion. But the direction that we're going and the staff that we have and the investments that we're working on and the partnerships that we have, I don't, I don't think you can get them any stronger, although we will continue to do so. So I, I make the recommendation that we support the recommendation that has been for, put forth at this point on the council agenda to support Mr. Russo's um, contract. Second. And Council Member Adams, uh, I know how emotional a kind of guy you are. You, you really put your heart and soul in this job, but I, I fear that you're that you're both looking at this logically and not emotionally. And my feeling is this city, how we tie things together, is emotion. You didn't get elected because you were an engineer. You got no offense to engineers. You got elected because you were passionate about your city. And the same thing with Councilmember Gardner. You not only served on multiple boards, but you also involved yourself in helping with the fire fire department on a volunteer level. And if you were not emotionally invested, you would not be here today. And I can assure you of that. So I caution you very carefully, make sure that you're not thinking about this logically, make sure you're thinking about it emotionally and how it affects all of our constituents, all of our business constituents, all of our future and current employees and think about it emotionally. You know, there's never a good time. And I, I'm in the financial business, and I, I, I kind of use Warren Buffett as an example. The, I think what we're trying to do here is we're trying to time the market. We're trying to time the market to what is the best time to implement this contract. There is never going to be a good time. But if we approve this contract, 
then we're taking out an insurance that we're protecting our assets. And that is why we need to approve this contract. Uh, until yesterday, I did not know there was a reopener laid out on the table or that uh, Chris had approached him and said we need to do this. That changes a lot of the issues within me. But we do have a lot of people out there who had an issue that we had to uh, deal with, uh, which I'm not going to bring up because it's a closed session item. And uh, I'm not sure it's fully resolved because of the phone calls we got. Uh, there's people that are concerned, and I, I, I understand their concerns and are people I respect. And uh, I, I can't see the death of a city over three months. So I, I think six months is way too long. I asked for this before. Everybody agreed with it in closed session to a, a point, and then now we're back to this. I, I, the infighting that should not be going on, that has gone out to the public, needs to stop, and we need to take that on as a council, as the electeds, that we don't have this type of fighting, we don't take it to the public. We don't air our issues out there. They're not supposed to be done that way. That shows an inexperience and immaturity uh, here. So, I don't know. Get it over with and do it, and pay the price, see what happens. Or uh, not do it pay a price and see what happens. And that's no way to run a government. There is no conspiracy. Nobody wants to kick John out of Riverside. We love what he's doing. It's a matter of perception and timing. Um, I think all of us, at least based on the numbers that comes to everyone, I've had 50 or 60 emails that are in my special folder that uh, have not one said, give the contract, give the contract. The people that sent the emails in and the e-comments are the ones that are at work and can't be here. And they took the time to send us. So I would ask that, uh, you know, even I can ask Steve, how many people said this is great, I want it, versus how many said not the right time? Mortgage does not mean commitment. That is a false statement. Uh, Mr. Russo's house is worth well over $140,000 more than he paid for it. He could walk out of here tomorrow and pay the loan back. It's not a big deal. Mortgage does not mean commitment. I don't want him gone, but mortgage does not mean commitment. And in deference to my dearest friend on the council, Mr. MacArthur, wars have been started because of emotion and not logical thought. And this is, again, we have heard, all of us have heard from our constituents. They're our bosses. They've said, nope, not the right time. Wait, wait, wait. Well, I'm going to be logical and listen to the people that have asked me to do this job whose doors I knocked on and who pleaded with me to do what's right for the people. They fund this government. They are the CEOs, and they have said, not the right time. City Manager, you know, I've told you that you are the most innovative and hardworking city manager we've had. And um, I, I respect that about you. Uh, but in terms of, again, as I already mentioned earlier, the timing of this, it's bad timing. It's bad business to reopen a contract in the middle of it when we have two years uh, plus to go. And it's bad policy that we are creating a precedent for future wage growth that we can't sustain. Okay, I think the council and the public knows that as we continue to give a city manager a raise, the rest will follow. And that is, I'm not comfortable with that movement. Okay, if people want to work in Riverside because it is one of the best cities in America now because of the, con the, 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 the concerted effort of the public as well. We're not giving the public a lot of the credit for this. And, and the public includes higher education institutions, the school districts, um, the chamber, nonprofit organizations that have come together over these years that I've been here before. Okay, they should get some of the credit for where we are today. And I think you heard that in the State of the City address both this year and last year. The power of partnerships is why we're here today. And, and, and it, it troubles me that we're at this point and we have a divided council, four to three, because of the city manager bringing this at this time. Bad timing, bad business, bad policy. It is not leadership by example, and you guys have heard me preach that since I've been here. And so for, for those reasons, I, I, don't, I don't support this. Councilman MacArthur. I'm being influenced by a disagreement that exists in our city that can lead to, I'm, I'm afraid, a very unfortunate public airing of our dirty linen. And I don't want to go there. 
Um, and so, although I continue to think the timing is bad, um, to avoid having that fight, I'm going to vote for this contract. Looking for the vote. Motion passes five to two. Councilman Condor, Councilman Perry, or no, 